Hey guys, welcome back. It is Vordy here. I'm on a roll today. You're probably seeing a bunch of stuff coming up right now because I'm just like, ah, I'll get everything out there. Go, 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 go. Um, anyways, so uh, I was thinking of showing this to you guys the way it was presented to me, but I think it would be really hard to see. So we're just going to zoom in by uh, just a couple of percent, no big deal, um, to kind of talk about this raid event. So normally I would use my phone uh, or Knox to kind of view this content and talk about it. But uh, for whatever reason, myself and many other people are having a hard time uh, seeing these events. So we're on Reddit. We're going to take a look at it. So uh, this video is going to be a quick cover of the raid and uh, kind of to help you prepare for the raid because most people probably will not be able to produce videos early in the morning uh, to try and give you all the information you need on how to fight. And guess what? It's on the internet already because this is an event that existed on the JP version and they just ported it over. All right. Now that that's been said, we're looking at the Final Fantasy Brave XPS Raid, King of Darkness. So these are the bosses we're fighting. It appears like it's three bosses together, but it's a single boss and they kind of cast different stuff together. It says, watch this boss designed by players of the Japanese version make its debate. It's debate. Debate. Into global. So it makes its debate. I tried. It makes its debut. <laughs> I have to pick a single word to just brutally murder for everyone. Otherwise, people will be like, this is not a 40 video. Anyways, so he's coming here. He is coming and, uh, oh crap, now I tried so hard to get that word wrong. I can't even continue the video. This is terrible. Okay, focus. Chakras of the mind, focus. Okay, we're good to go. So, the way the raid events work is you have a single boss. We, as a community, will keep fighting the boss. The more people kill it, uh, it hit points kind of disappears, and then it levels up. The higher the level, the better the rewards for the coins. So, we're going to be fighting this guy to get the uh, Tri-Trinity. The Tri-Trinity, the, in the Dimensional Vortex, will fight the Tri-Trinity. We'll damage them and we'll collect raid points. We'll use those raid points for individual rewards just by, like, getting the different points for beating them. And then we'll use those raid coins to summon. We'll be able to summon for crafting materials to make the items we get as well as for units which are actually pretty good if you haven't seen the video about the units you can uh, definitely take a look at that in my channel i covered all of them uh, individually we also made a longer video and we kind of talked about all of them a little bit in depth to see if they're actually useful or not um yeah so you can take a look at that in another video so you can use the materials you get from your coins and then you can craft these limited items. <clears throat> you got the staff of like the angel or whatever. Oh, angel of wand is right there. And you got the magic something here. So looking at the items here, you only give us a few. There's a few they don't talk about. Uh, not yet. So you got the magic barrier devices, which is defense spirit 15%. It's an accessory. Uh, gives you auto shell, which is about 20% spirit buff. Overall interesting item. This item will technically give you 35% spirit boost. Which is not, it's okay. I mean, like, it's not bad to have it on a, on a unit before you buff your units with spirit or whatever. So it's okay. Like, you, you, if you buff your unit, then the 20% disappears. And then you only get the 15% off the item, which is still not that bad. Uh, looking at the other items here, the wand, a two attack. All right. Defense 12, spirit 48. Not bad for spirit. It gives you the 20 light resistance, which is really nice. You never know when you need light resistance. So take the free item. Why not? The, the ZD helmet. Looks like an Iron Man top of a helmet with like little flowers on the right there, which looks like My Little Pony, and it's got a chin strap. Like, girl, I need a hat with a chin strap. I've been waiting for this all my whole life. Uh, items we don't know. It kind of explains a little bit here on how to do the raid, which is what I just explained above. And then you get uh, the raid summons, which is pretty cool. It's, you get five. One, two, three, four, five. Five units. You get five units to summon on. All the units are pretty interesting. On top of that, you get to get uh, crystals, or sorry, mega sites or whatever, as well as materials for this event. Actually really nice. I hope you guys get at least one of each unit. You should be able to get multiple of these units and then feed them into each other to get um, get their trust masteries. So overall, the event is pretty interesting. So now, if uh, you want to fight this boss, you're trying to figure out what to do. So again, a quick shout out to Final Fantasy Bear Rexius' Reddit and our user here, DYZPA. Because this is the person who's posted on here, and they're adding here saying like who they give the credit to, so I'll let that person give the credit to that. Essentially what this is, it's a translation from the Japanese version here to the global version on what they have. Some of these things may change. 
We don't know yet, even though the update's completely gone right now, we don't know if any of this stuff has changed. We're just kind of theory crafting a little bit and it should be, but might not be the same as, as the thing. So, so it might not be exactly the same as the global version. It's exactly what I think I'm saying you. Saying to you, this stuff is probably set in stone. That's probably the same. Same thing with this, it's probably the same. Um, so here's the stuff, the strategy, the things you need to know about the boss. You can break attack, defense, and spirit. Can be broken. The type of the monster? There are machines, so you need to use Machine Killer to take advantage of this. Uh, boss has no elemental resistances and no weaknesses. Boss can inflict poison, blind, paralyzed, disease, silence, and confusion. Boss uses multiple attacks each turn, but most devastatingly of all, the boss uses a fixed 999 fixed single target attack every three turns. So. Uh, if you guys were lucky to get Gladius, like myself, or anybody else who has Wilhelm or our high level tank like Warrior of Light, and you have a lot of hit points on them, your tank, if they take this attack alone, can probably live through it. Because my Gladius can get like 13,000 hit points, 14,000 almost. He can take this hit and still live. So it's not super devastating, but for a new player, this is very devastating. So the recommended strategy that they are saying is to try and one shot or two shot the boss before he gets to that phase. What do you need to do with that? Well, in order to do a one shot, two shot, um, uh, one turn or two turn kill, you need to have four DDs. So four damage dealers, you need a buffer obviously, and then a debuffer to do a break because you can break attack, defense, and spirit. Um, obviously you just wanna get, bring somebody who can break the defense the highest so defense and spirit just break that which probably is going to be my buffer which is probably going to be so loyal i'm going to bring along or whatever if you're looking for a longer fight you want to get a mixture of either two to three damage dealers you need to get a buffer or a debuffer mix a healer and a tank okay so if you're getting a buffer then obviously um you're not going to bring you bringing a debuffer unless you can have a unit that you can do both then that's what you can do healer is uh, that they're preferring, and I, I remember doing this in the Japanese version, they want to use re-raise because of the fixed 9999 damage every three turns. You want to try and do like an AoE re-raise or something, um, so you can do that. In my opinion, depending how you're chaining, you should be able to build uh, Riku's Limit Burst within three turns, and then you can have an AoE re-raise on everyone. So that, to me, is a possibility Then you don't even have to worry about having any of that stuff. Like, I don't even think you would need a tank at that point. Um, like, if you brought your debuffer, your buffer to be... Uh, you know, she can't be a buffer, but she can do a break if you bring her thing. Yeah. It it's, depends. Like, you can literally mix it into, a, in, into this thing, so you can bring a full damage dealing party with a buffer, and then... Um, then you can do it and then utilize like maybe a, a trust mastery or something to do some sort of break and then you can pretty much one or two shot them but if you bring if you bring riku you can actually last a, a lot longer as long as you keep bringing those limit burst stones you can keep re-resing everyone and you can just blow them up till, till they die it doesn't matter about the 999 you should be okay but yeah i would probably suggest bringing riku in this point here and then going from there so healer yeah either re-raise or bring riku in the tank i would say a single target tank that can take a beating you're looking at kagdoza or whatever that weird blob boss is i don't have him but you can bring him along because he's a single target uh buff him with a ton of hit points you can talk about warrior of light can do the same thing uh cecil can do the same thing if you can buff their hit points high enough i don't know how high cecil can go but i know warrior of light can get well over 10k uh wilhelm uh you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, Gladius. I'm probably gonna be bringing Gladius. I'll try and do two different versions of this fight. I will do the single target, um, you know, just try and blow him up as fast as possible. And then I will probably make a video on just actually doing the fight, because I think this is a fun fight. I'll bring a tank who can try and eat that, um, that 9999 and live. Uh, I would like to really try and do that. So it says here some little tips and tricks that they're suggesting, which is normally the general tip when you're bringing damage dealers. Uh, bring at least two chainers, like uh, the Fatimusu, Fa Fami Tsu. Famitsu recommends party, including two Shintotos. So if you have chainers like Edgar, that stuff is probably way better. Edgar has um, Machine Killer built in himself, plus his TM is a is machine killer. But anyway, two says, since the boss hits multiple times per turn, it's recommended to bring either a buffer or debuffer to mitigate the damage. If you still can't handle the damage, consider bringing both and reducing your DDs to two chainers. Then better to have slightly longer fight than a one, sh uh, one shot kill uh, of your party, which is the boss. He can kill you literally very quickly. Here is a list of units that have machine killer 
So Edgar's Trust Mastery has Machine Killer. He also has Machine Killer in his kit, if I remember correctly. Olive has it, Aileen has it, Veritas of Light has it, uh, A2, 2B, Glocka has it, Black Cat Lit has it, Eve has it, Adam has it, and Gaia Hammer, which is the item we would have gotten from our previous event just recently, um, has a 50% increase in damage to that as well. So these are the things you can put on there. You should be able to stack a ton of machine killer from different sources to really blow this guy up. So they continue to give you some examples here of what you can do. If you're curious, you can either go right to the Reddit yourself or you can pause the video and take a look at what they're saying here because I don't think I really need to cover it. The one thing I will hit up on though is Black Cat Lid. She recently got her six star and if you actually buff her up and you put some stuff on her, you can get 225% if nature's protect is fully enhanced by actually equipping some small items on her. Uh, and you can get a really big boost in damage. And she can hit pretty hard. All right, so that's kind of what it's going on here. The Warrior of Light is the guy I'm going to be bringing along and that's what we're talking. There's a lot more information here if you want to pause the video and read it. But that's pretty much where I'm ending this video. That is my little mini strategy before, uh, or like my pre-fight strategy um, on what I'm going to be doing when the fight comes out. <clears throat> I wanted to try and do this stuff more often when we find out an event that's actually being ported from the JP version to the global version. Because the videos actually don't come out on the day because most people are still either trying to figure out the best way to beat it i know the evil actors out there you know racking his brain around trying to figure a way on how to make the most free to play way to try and beat it there for you guys i know that uh clay and myself probably try and go with as most uh, like the, you know the biggest whale thing same thing with how like everybody's trying to figure out the best way to beat him as fast as possible for yourself and then try and help out the community by providing suggestions because that's what we're here for we're here to help man so I know that's gonna happen and I, I'm hopefully this will start like a new thing where those guys as well will try and do a video before the fight which is just kind of more like theory crafting because it's kind of like you're not hundred percent sure what's going on uh, but this is what we know in the JP version as long as nothing has changed from the JP version then it should be smooth and it should be giving enough for those people who uh, need a little bit of information to jump into the fight and try it out for themselves. Otherwise, that same day or a little bit later in the day, you will be seeing videos from the rest of us, including myself, where we're gonna be saying like, hey, this is how we beat it. You know, this is the whale version. This is the fast version. This is the slow version. This is the free to play version uh, and whatever. Okay guys, so that's kind of what's going on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section below if you do enjoy hearing the information a little bit earlier uh, than receiving it on the day or do you prefer to just hear everything once the event is in there with like a video of myself actually doing the fight. So just let me know in the comment section below and we'll go from there. Let me know as well Knowing this information, who are you bringing along? What is your party composition going to be? My party composition is going to be... Hopefully they didn't kick me out here. <clears throat> Let's see if I have. I'm going to be bringing my boy Gladio as my tank, who is currently geared as damage. I'm going to be bringing probably Luca. Oh no, actually I'm not going to be bringing... I'm going to do all damage dealers. So you know, my... Let's say for my actual party, where I'm going to be doing the tank and spank, like through the fight, my tank is going to be Gladio, my healer is going to probably be Luca. my support buffer or whatever is gonna be Riku, and then my two damage dealers are going to be probably, for fun, I might actually bring two Edgars as my damage dealing chainers. Otherwise, I will bring Onion Knight and Noctis. Yeah, and then a friend on your night to chain and destroy that guy. So that's my strategy right now. Just kind of quick without thinking about it. That's what I would bring. All right, guys. I will see you guys in the next video. This is Vordy. Hit that like, subscribe button, share with a friend, help a homie out, and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.